Hello, friends, and welcome to another edition of Community Partnership Chat. You already know me. I'm Adriana Dawson, <laughs> and I am part of Horizon State and Government Affairs team, and I oversee and support our community engagement efforts in the East and the Central Region. And folks, as always, I have another amazing guest for you today. Mm -hmm. uh, our Community Partnership Chat featured guest is Johanna Cochran. She is the Executive Director of We Share Hope an amazing organization here tackling food insecurity by retrieving surplus food from retail partners and redistributing it to neighbors in need. Johanna, amiga, Hello. welcome. Hi, sweetie. How are you? I am absolutely amazing. And thank you for being so generous with your time and joining me today uh, to share with our amazing viewers all that you do and the goodness uh, that we share hope is engaging in and uh, how, in fact, the organization is supporting, you know, our neighbors here in Rhode Island. So why don't we get started? Because this is about you today. So tell us about We Share Hope. Thank you. First off, Adriana, for inviting inviting us on today. Um, we are always excited for opportunities to share information about the work that we're doing throughout the state of Rhode Island. And the way that we do this work is we work with our partners in the food industry, um, large partners, think of Stop and Shop, think of BJ's, think of Ocean State mm -hmm. Job Lot. Um, and they all have surplus food for any variety of reasons that we don't want going into a landfill because it's perfectly good mm. food. And there are people in Rhode Island and more people, it's growing every single day, that are experiencing food insecurity. And so there's no reason why that food needs to go into a landfill when it can go onto the dinner tables of our neighbors who are facing food insecurity. So what we do is we go retrieve that food from our partners. We don't even make them leave their facility. We go get it with our big trucks. Uh, we bring it back here. We sort through it. We go through a quality control process with that food, and then we redistribute it out to our um, partners that are feeding their communities. Um, so that might be a church. It might be a community group. Um, some of the product ends up going into our Hope Market, which is our pay it forward pantry, which is open to anybody um, in the state. And folks can come in and select food right off the shelves. Um, mm -hmm make a monetary donation if they have um, a little bit of extra funds that they would like to donate to us. Um, and really 99% of the people who come visit us at Hope Market do want to make a donation because they learn that those donations help us deliver food out throughout Rhode Island completely free of charge. We don't deliver, we don't charge a delivery fee. We don't charge a per pound fee. Uh, all of the work that we do uh, is, is, is for, is, you know, through the goodness of the, the work that we're able to do. So um, that's a huge part of our mission. Um, and then really excitedly over the last year, um, we have launched a new program where we're addressing food insecurity with our most vulnerable Rhode Islanders. And those are the kiddos, right? Mm. So we, do, we talk a lot about um, food insecurity and how we can help think past the lunchtime and think about a lifetime. Right. And for us, it's all about making sure that students have the food that they need so that they can not have anxiety about what's going to be on the dinner table when they go home at night so that they can show up for school well-nourished, ready to learn, able to focus on academics so that they can move themselves um, through school and hopefully out of poverty. And that's kind of a long range goal. So it's not one of those like sexy, oh, you know, immediate impact, but um, we know that we're here for the long haul and we expect to see results within the next five to 15 years on that. I love that. And I have had the pleasure of visiting your facility and it is magical, right? When I walked in there, because it's kind of unassuming, right? You pull up and it kind of looks like the, the warehouse. And when you walk in, the energy that your staff and your team bring and all the goodness that lives there. And again, witnessing the line of folks, but everybody had a smile on their face. You yeah. know, it felt like I was walking into cheers, like everybody knew you, everybody was ready to say hello. Um, so shout out to your team, you know, to your board and to the folks again that are contributing to the mission. And can we just stay on, um, you talked about the school and the partnerships with the school. Uh, are you at liberty to share um, who you're currently partnering with, what schools or what districts you're currently oh, yeah. uh, supporting? Absolutely. And, and I'm glad you asked because this is, it's a We Share Hope 
um, driven project, but it's not a project that can happen um, with just We Share Hope. We mm -hmm. have amazing partners, um, starting with the Rhode Island Department of Education. So the mm. commissioner, um, Commissioner Infante Green is a huge supporter of our work um, and has worked really side by side with us to identify the top 10 highest need districts in the state uh, and establish our goal is to work our way through that top 10 list uh, and establish a school food pantry in at least one school in every district. Um, and I mean, you know, just to give you an example of some of her, her partnership, she will pick up the phone and call a superintendent in a district that we want to get into and say, I believe in this program, please take We Share Hope's mm -hmm. call when they, when they reach out to you. Uh, and that's been just super helpful because superintendents are amazing, but they're juggling a million different projects. Right. And then here comes, we share hope. It's like, and, they, and they're like, what do you want to do? Um, so it's really <laughs> nice to kind of have um, the commissioners buy-in and, and verbal sort of agreement with, with the work that we're doing. Um, in addition to that, we, the superintendents in the districts, right? As soon as they really learn and, and dive into what it is that we want to do, which is setting up an on-site school mm -hmm. food pantry, it includes the shelving, it includes a refrigerator and a freezer donated from our partners over at Gills Appliances. Uh, and then it includes a bi-weekly food delivery. So it's really kind of a turnkey operation from that perspective. Um, but at the same time, we need somebody on the inside who's willing to administer the program, um, mm -hmm. who's willing to work with the family and work with the students and bag and stock the shelves and bag the groceries. Um, so again, you know, the, having those folks on the inside are really huge. Um, so as far as who we've worked with so far, uh, Providence, I'm looking at my board here because I have a board that keeps me inspired. That's but, um, right. Now, you know, so Central Falls is the top highest need district in the state. 86% mm -hmm. um, of their students are classified as economically disadvantaged by the Rhode Island Department of Ed, um, which means they receive free or reduced school breakfasts and lunches. Um, so we are in Central Falls at the McKenna Center for Teaching and Learning. Um, Mayor Rivera is a huge supporter of our work and it's been such a great partner and friend um, to the organization right. and me personally. So um, she was definitely, I was so excited to sort of get, get working with her. Um, also working very, very closely with Providence, which as you can imagine is the second highest need mm -hmm. district coming in with 77% of their students. Mm -hmm. um, and so we actually have two school food pantries currently in Providence. Um, mm -hmm. And then it goes down from there, Woonsocket, Newport, right. Tuckett, uh, and just this morning, I'm all dressed up. I don't usually look this fly, but- Yes, like, you do. Yeah. Stop oh, yeah. it. Yes, you do. <laughs> No, I'm usually like in my We Share Hope sweatshirt in boots because I'm building pallets too sometimes. So, um, but we did just cut the ribbon in East Providence um, and that's amazing as well. So we are aggressively pursuing these top 10 highest need districts. Mm -hmm. And I just want to point out, you know, when I share statistics like 86%, I think sometimes people kind of don't fully know the story behind the statistic. And just to kind of break it down for you, Think of a classroom of 20, 20 students. Mm -hmm. And if 86% of the students in that classroom don't know if they're going to eat dinner when they go home at night, how are they learning? How mm -hmm. are they retaining information? How is a teacher teaching them um, when there's this anxiety that's sort of gnawing at their brain and, and taking up the space mm -hmm. that we do reserve normally for learning? Um, and so I always just sort of like to pull that out because that's a huge huge number right. and no child. I mean, well, 1% is too much. Um, I'm Italian. I cannot even think, I can't deal with thinking about people and children in particular being hungry. Mm -hmm. um, and so 86%, that's a number that we need to really work on. And with the partners that we have, we're making that happen. Absolutely. Well, again, thanks to you and the partners and congratulations on the newest partnership uh, yeah. with the, uh, the city of East Providence. So thank you for all of that. <laughs> so I want to spend a little bit of time, like who is Johanna, right? Like, I think it's important that as we talk about the amazing organization and the great work it's done, we also need to center and anchor the conversation around the leaders who lead these amazing organizations. You know, like, what's your story? Who are you? Like, what's your why? And how did you end up, right? Like connecting to, to this work. So would you mind sharing with us uh, a little bit about what that sort of career pathway looked like and what led you to uh, We Share Hope. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's like just a big old question, girl. What'd you say? <laughs> we, only have, we only have 25 minutes. Oh my God. Okay. What's the um, elevator version? <laughs> elevator version. Okay. Um, 
girl meets boy. No, just kidding. Um, so basically, the uh, elevator version is I, my entire career has been in the nonprofit industry. Uh, I was at 19 years old, one of those really annoying people calling people during dinner time, asking them for money um, back when people actually answered their phones. So that was kind of how I got my start in the world of nonprofit fundraising in particular. Mm -hmm. um, and really felt a degree, even though I was getting hung up on and yelled at and sworn at and all that good stuff, because who likes a telemarketer, even if you're calling for a good cause, um, you know, at, at the end of the day, when I was getting donations for those causes, it lit something in me mm. that reminded me about how important it is that when I get up in the morning and I am not a morning person, so I need to do some serious like cheerleading of myself with sure. to even get out of bed um, and to get myself out of bed, it's gotta be, it's gotta be because I'm helping somebody. It's gotta be because I'm getting an opportunity to use the skills that I have to make a difference and make a life better for somebody else. Mm -hmm. um, and so I've dipped my toe in other, in other careers um, along the way, but I always tend to, it's like the Godfather, that new port. I mean, that, that, that nonprofit industry just like pulls you right back in again. So, mm -hmm. um, so, so really that's been my career. It's been in fundraising. It's been in PR uh, marketing related to nonprofit organizations. And I've had an opportunity throughout that career to work for some incredible organizations, um, some of Rhode Island's um, most well-respected mm -hmm. organizations and learn and take nuggets from each one of those organizations. I was at Brown um, and I was working in the fundraising department at Brown. And that is like, you know, you can't get any bigger than Brown. I've never been part of a fundraising department that's as big as Brown's, uh, but they have a lot of work to do and a lot of important work. Um, and then I was with United Way and I was with Children's Friend and each of those really just helped me grow um, as as a nonprofit professional um, and gave me a chance to observe some really inspiring leaders at the same time um, that I just sort of integrated into my own sort of personal leadership philosophies. Um, and throughout those th those interactions, I've met lots of people. And that's how mm -hmm. I got um, connected with, with, uh, with We Share Hope. I ended up doing some doing an event with a current board member. Um, and when there was this opening, I had been laid off from, from a position during COVID. Um, same, many, many people with the same story. Sure. Um, they had an opening, the board member reached out to me and we started a conversation around it. Um, I'll say that, and this is a common refrain, especially among women, but I'll say that when I looked at the job description, I was like, oh, mm, like maybe 25, 30%. Like, I feel like I could make a really deep impact in these areas, but like, I know nothing about this and this and this. Um, but I said, if you're willing to give me the, um, have the confidence in me to allow me to assemble a team of folks that will make up some of those um, gaps in my own knowledge. Mm -hmm. And they were, um, We Share Hope's board of directors is an incredible board, um, very, very supportive and very open-minded. Um, and they gave me the go ahead to do that. And that's really what um, the last two and a half years have been. It's just been about, okay, here's where I lack. Let's pull somebody in who has a skill in, the, in this area. And I think together as an organization and as a crew, we all sort of make up one head, if you will. Ah, I love it. Well, and so it's not that you lack, Johanna. I think okay. it's, just, it's it's muscles that you're learning how to flex. That there it is. Flex I like that. Floor. That's good. Yeah, true. Like I heard somebody say the other day, and I loved this, um, to embrace the word yet, right? Like I don't right. know that yet, but I'm, you know, I'm learning it. So that's your snaps for that. And thanks for reminding me about that. I'm going to, I feel like I'm going to write that on my dry erase board, like this big, like yet, like <laughs> not yet. I'm, not yet. I'm working on the there. flex. Yeah. I'm working on the <laughs> flex. So speaking of the word yet, and I know you kind of offered a little bit of teaser on the front end and shared, um, you know, the partnerships and the growth of the, uh, sort of the school initiative and the school partnerships, but uh, I'd love it if you'd share with us kind of what's coming up for the remainder of 2023 that you're super excited about that you're able to share with us. Yeah. Um, well, we're continuing to move forward on additional school food pantries. That's 
um, that's just a huge focus for us. Um, we, we are feeling the impact. We're seeing the impact already. Providence Public Schools, where we have food pantries, are reporting less absenteeism, um, oh, which wow. is incredible too. That's because great. where there's a, where there's food, kids are coming at least for the food and staying in school for the rest of the day. So I think we're going to see some um, tangential benefits that we weren't expecting um, mm -hmm. initially when we launched the program. So we definitely want to make sure that we're continuing um, with that focus. In addition. Being vulnerable or mm -hmm. having life challenges can turn into a full-time job for folks to get the services they need. You've got to go one place for housing. You have to go someplace else for a job. You have to go someplace else for your medical care. And then you need to go to this food pantry that's only open on Tuesdays and Thursdays when the moon is full and Mercury's in retrograde, right? So it's like <laughs> there's so many um, tasks that have to be done that are just absolutely exhausting. And then yes, we expect you to you know find a job as well. So as we are moving into the next phase of what We Share Hope looks like, the board has done a lot of talking around partnering with other well-respected mm. um, organizations who are working with folks experiencing vulnerability in some area of their life, mm -hmm. but not necessarily providing a food-based program. And what can we do to merge the services a little bit more so that if you're going to get health care, you can also get a bag of groceries while you're there as mm -hmm. well. Um, so that maybe we can cut down at least on on one of the trips that that we ask um, folks who are who are vulnerable in Rhode Island to make. Um, so oh, you'll hear that. more about that as we as we go. Um, we did just finish our first ever strategic planning process. Okay. Um, yes, I know. Oh my God. <laughs> a lot of late nights on that one. But um, again, the board's amazing and everyone was mm -hmm patient and we've we've talked to folks in the community we've talked to thought leaders we've talked to folks in the food space um really just to get our finger on the pulse of what is happening in rhode island with regards to food insecurity mm -hmm. and where there are services and where there aren't services so that we can identify gaps like we're not trying to do the same thing everyone else is doing right. um because people are already doing it and they're doing it well so like let's let them continue to I do love that, that. Um, but let's look at where there's um, not a need being met and, and go into those areas. So you will hear more about the strategic plan. I can't wait. Teaser I can't alert. Wait. So. <laughs> yeah, I love that. And I really love the idea of the integrated services, right, where it is really focused and centered on the individual or the families. Yeah. that are being supported in those wraparound services. And again, the integration of the services and the service delivery model. So kudos to that. Yeah, thank you. So thank you. So unfortunately, our time is coming to a, uh, to an end, but I have one last question for yes. you. You know, and I'd be remiss if I didn't acknowledge that it's National Volunteer Month, right? Yay! And you, right? And so you know, certainly you being our guest of honor and recognizing the work that you do, but also the um, uh, the work that your tremendous volunteer community also, how it pours into the organization. But I'd love for you to share with us what partners like Verizon, right, and other network partners that you have, what can we continue to do to support your efforts? Volunteers and corporate partnerships are the only way that we can accomplish everything that we do on a weekly basis. We have over 125 individual volunteers who come to us every week, stocking shelves, picking up food donations, um, providing professional services as well. And then we have an amazing list of corporate uh, supporters and partners as well, Verizon being one of them. Um, and the thing that we love about our partnerships, particularly with Verizon and, and you, Adriana, is your willingness to think beyond just stocking bags of groceries, but really what can you do as a company to leverage, whether it's your contacts, your institutional knowledge, your professional skills, your own sort of ability to consult and help us look at the big picture. Um, and that's something that I've really come to value, um, particularly our partnership with Verizon. Um, you are a phone call away and are always willing to, I know, oh, no. <laughs> But for me, no, for no, no, for you. Don't stop taking other people's phone calls. Right? <laughs> <laughs> but you are right, and it it can be the nonprofit sector can be a really lonely um, sector to be in, right? And 
it is so heartening to know that we have friends on the outside, if you will, who are willing to put down sort of your your own sort of daily task list um, for the greater good and to help make more happen. And that is absolutely what happens um, when you and I have our conversations. And I can't wait to get a group of your amazing Verizon folks in here um, because I have a feeling we will put them to work. They will work. Um, make sure everyone wears boots. And um, but also the nice thing is that when you come and volunteer with us, you don't have to go to the gym that night because you definitely get your your steps and your and your heavy lifting in as well. So. Right. Talking about flexing muscles that we haven't flexed in a there while. It is. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's awesome. And I so appreciate you sharing that with us because uh, again, I do want to underscore the importance of that human capital and really encourage folks uh, who uh, may be connecting with this message and the population that we share hope continues to serve to reach out and to um, identify ways in which they can volunteer um, and continue to support the effort. And we so look forward to continuing to link arms and support you in that effort and getting the crew, getting the Verizon, the V team, our local nice. V teamers out to your site. Uh, so um, awesome for V teamers watching, stay tuned. I'm coming for you. <laughs> Joanna, thank you so much for the work that you lead and how you lead that work uh, to your team, to your board and uh, you know, those in your um, network uh, just pouring into this amazing effort and supporting our families and our youth now with your, you know, your partnerships with the school. And for those of you watching, thank you for tuning in to another episode of Community Partnership Chat with Verizon. We will talk to you soon. Thanks again. Thanks, Johanna. Thank you.